And uh, I want to share with you something uh, that the Lord put in my heart. Uh, it was weeks ago, but I didn't have uh, the, the freedom to share, but I felt I'm going to share this uh, this morning. But before that, as usual, I have a joke. Okay, if you have heard it before, but uh, it's, 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 uh, you just bear with me. Who are the lizards? The lizards are the ones who are called poor crocodiles who forgot to have orlicks when they were younger. Okay. What is a pizza? Pizza is just a hookapum that went abroad for higher education. Okay. Alright. Um, uh, I, think, I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, these are the two jokes I thought I would share. But lift up your Bible, say this after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Influence me this morning. Holy Spirit. I can't teach. You are the teacher. I'm just going to talk. But I pray that you are the teacher, that you will teach us. When you hear the word, the word says, you will turn to the right to the left. So you'll be on. We humble ourselves. As I talk, I pray that you will teach your children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, this morning, uh, we're going to finish off the last emblem of the Holy Spirit, which is called Tao. And uh, some of you might be thinking, oh, it's a New Year message, he's going to give us something fresh, new. And I believe it's fresh, I believe it's new, but I believe also it's timed, arranged in such a way that this message was supposed to be two weeks before, but then uh, my father-in-law spoke and then uh, we ha I had to stop and speak a Christmas sermon and uh, so this was pulled and I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do I give this morning to your children? And I felt the Lord said, talk about Holy Spirit as Tao. And I, I, will, I will go into this uh, topic, it's quite intense, so I want you to take uh, notes. If you are taking notes, it's very good for you. And uh, the Holy Spirit is referred as different things. The Holy Spirit is referred as water, as uh, fire, in, uh, as wind, as rain. And we are talking about the Holy Spirit is referring as Tao. And there is only one word God referred, of course he referred as eagle in the Old Testament, but when it comes to New Testament, he refers himself as Tao. And John chapter 1 verse 32 says, and he, John, this is John, gives a testimony, he gives a testimony, he says, I saw spirit come down from heaven as a Tao and remained on him. This was John seeing the wonderful Amazing stuff. No, everybody got baptized. Nobody witnessed that or nobody experienced this. But here John is witnessing something marvelous. And he saw heavens were opened. That's what we read in, in Isaiah. The render your heavens and come down. Which basically means tear open. It's a violent act. It's not just like tearing your little gift paper. It's just a violent act like God tears down, which is the similar expression was used in Greek translation, when Jesus died the, the, the way he was torn, it was a violent act so that's what it says the heavens were opened and God came down in the form of Tao, and I have noticed uh, many people talk about Tao and I have heard many teachings about Tao and I have learned many teachings, but I think one beautiful part about Tao, Tao is a very skittish skimmish, very uh, timid bird. It's, a, it's, it's not a very gluttonous bird. It's not like crow. That's why Bible never says when the Holy Spirit came down, he didn't form, came down in the form of a crow or in the form of a peacock or a chicken or eagle. It came down because Tao represents something so beautiful and I, I believe we're going to uh, 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 before I get into the part of the message, I want to just give you a little bit about Tao. I grew up in village, for many of you might know or may not know. And back home, my dad would just bring me live chickens to clean. And those days, there was no chicken stores where they would cut it and for you. So, anybody clean this chicken, live chicken? Yes. It's fun to do that, isn't it? Yes. I'm going to explain a little bit, but not in graphics, but I, I don't want you to turn into vegan. and. Um, then I have to pray for deliverance, but, but, but anyway, but 
you know, you hold the feathers together, the feet together, the feet, and then you cut the throat, all the uh, blood oozes out, and you don't leave it. Otherwise, it's going to become like an Old Testament tabernacle. Drink blood sprinkled everywhere. But then you boil a big pot of water, you dip this, uh, dip this uh, uh, chicken inside, and you take it out, and then all the feathers gone, it comes like out of a spa, you know, wax completely, and then I cut the butt, take out the intestine. While I'm doing it, my dad will say, please, be careful. Why? There is a green bag. Am I right? Yeah. There's a medical term for that. What is the word? God bladder. Huh? You see? Thank you so much. So, the, I used to call green bag because the green bag, if you mess up the green bag, you can cook amazing chicken curry, but it's going to taste. Come on, help me out. It's going to taste bitter. You can make amazing KFC, but the KFC is going to be. Bitter FC, you know, but all the birds has that except dove because I have green dove also. That tells me one thing. This just this is my point. I want to try home. When you say I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, then there is no room for bitterness. Amen. When I say Lord, I am carrying Your presence. Holy Spirit is who is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is Spirit of Jesus. Who is Jesus? Reveals the love of the Father. Trinity works together. Father created, Son redeemed, Holy Spirit dwells in us. Amen? So, if I claim, if I claim, I come before you and say, I am a man of God, I am a child of God, I am seated in Ephesians 2, next to Him in heaven please, but then, I am unforgiving to one another. I am bitter towards one another. What I am saying is, these are all just Christianity, I am not living Christ likeness. Do you know the difference between a Christianity and Christ? One talks about religion, another talks about relationship. Amen. So that's my message this morning. And I want to talk about how in 2019 we can live a lifestyle of bitter free lifestyle. Amen. I want to talk about that. And I want to talk because you know, maybe this is not the message you want to hear on 2019. You want to say, hear a message that is like so encouraging. God is going to, you know, turn your double trouble for every double for every trouble. You know, I, I, I can give you some kind of encouraging message. But I felt we can't go ahead with the back age of 2018. It's impossible. <laughs> I believe God wants to take us to the new level. And this level requires us to be like Him. Amen. So, let's look at a couple of statements by some of my heroes in faith. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. And then Nelson Mandela, the Bai, worked in South Africa for four years as a missionary. And he said this, something very beautiful. He said, I cannot forget, but I can forgive. As I walk out of the doors, towards the gate, that's the Paul Small prison in Cape Town, and would lead to my freedom. I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison. Can I make a suggestion? There are so many people incarcerated outside the prison walls, there those who are incarcerated behind the prison walls. They are incarcerated with their prison walls of bitterness, hatred, jealousy, competition, you know, unforgiveness, resentments. But they are Christians. They, they call themselves Christians. They go to church. They do their kumbaya thing. They are part of all this stuff. But then their hearts are callous towards God, towards people, towards one another. I want to prophesy over all of you this 2019. You will be the most bitter free people in 2019. Amen. Amen. I want to speak life over you. That your family will be like, you know, there is something called when you buy bags now, they call it Teflon coating. You know that? The new bags that comes with Teflon. They they sell that. One guy bought me a bag, it's 18,000 rupees, that bag. I didn't pay for it. And my t-shirts are only 150 rupees t-shirt. So the guy, if somebody steals my suitcase, not what is going to inside, he's going to get out of it. 
So, <laughs> you know, it's just maximum 1,000 rupees worth of stuff will be inside. But the suitcase itself cost 18,000 rupees. And he said to me, Charles, this is weatherproof, snowproof, as if the room is going to have snow. It's cold enough, but anyway, but all those proof. And he gave me the suitcase, and, and I, I literally tested it. You pour a glass of water on it, it doesn't even stick it. I want to speak prophecy over you right now, in 2019. That's your anointing of the Holy Spirit. Teflon coating. People come to you, attack you, but it's not going to attack Amen. your identity. Amen. Because what God has called, what God has spoken over you, Amen. is going to stand firm. What the word of people is not going to stand over your life. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited, man. I didn't think I'm going to preach, but... Anyway, so I want to talk about the four statements. It's very simple. Because people talk about forgiveness, bitterness, resentment. They say, if this is true or not, so this is self-examination, okay? Let's go for it. Do not forgive until the person asks for it. Is it true or false? Come on, church, help me out. False. Number two, when you forgive, it includes minimizing the pain or punishment. <laughs> if I say true and if it was false, what it could be, you know, 2019 is a love start. Okay, false. Okay. okay. These are questions that is very easy to guess. Okay. The, number three, as soon as you forgive, you have to start trusting and reuniting with that person and the relationship. No. See, some, like, sometimes uh, the, the white leaders, uh, they say, oh, for Kallanalu Pusha, Vannalanalu Pusha, have you heard that thing? speaking in tongues for some of you. <laughs> it basically means, they say, even if it is a sand, he is my husband. Even if it is a rock, he is my husband. But sometimes, Tarzans, they have to be in the jungle until they get trained. Hello? Amen? Amen. So, that's the third one. The fourth one, look at this one. This is interesting. True forgiveness means you have forgotten what they did to you. We have gone through. You see, forgiveness, this is a beautiful thing. Joyce Mayer says this, and I'm going to quote that. She says, For unforgiveness is like this. Bitterness is like this. I drink the poison and expecting other person to die. I drink it, but I'm expecting other person to die. And I want to say this over you because all the statements are false. It doesn't mean you forgot. If you forgive something, it's not about you forgot about that, what happened. The memory will be there. But, I tell you, the responsibility, the vengeance that you desire, you are given to the hands of God. I want to tell you, there are a lot of people who are holding on stuff. Look at our Bollywood movies, Hollywood movies. The one major theme is what? Unforgiveness. It's just, you know, the hero is killed, there's all his wife and kids, everybody is killed, and then he jumps through the window of the 40th floor in his motorbike, goes through fights and then in the blockbuster movie. And I want to prophesy over you, you are not going to walk like that. Amen? You will choose to let go. Okay. I want to give you a little bit of a concrete teaching on this. I feel the Holy Spirit led us in this. Uh, the prayer that Jesus taught is one of the most Fabulous prayer, every Christian talks. I assume everybody is a Christian here and everybody has known the scripture, right? We all know this prayer. We sing this, we have a tune, some churches put a nice tune into it and we talk about it. But this prayer has got six basic things and I have no time to talk about it, all those things. But we'll rush quickly. The first one it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What does that mean? Your holy name basically means praise. Our life, God is saying, if you want to pray, the first thing you do is what? You praise. Rick Warren says, if you praise, God will praise you up. If you complain, you remain. Amen. And that's why the first attitude of yours should be a praising attitude. That's why we gather together and we praise. We don't talk about the word. Why? With our hearts come with a lot of heaviness. But we come and we say, God, I bring this all. I praise you. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. The second one, he says, may your kingdom come on earth and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He talks about purpose. So first one, you praise God. Second, you pray for your purpose. Purposeless Christian is a passionless Christian. 
Hello? Did you hear what I said? Purposeless Christian is a passionless Christian. In other words, purpose is the one that drives a Christian to move forward with excitement, with some sort of desire to say, I am here because God has called me to do something. If you take out the purpose, we become a product of a random product. We just say, I was just born, I was part of the plan, accidental plan of my parents, I was just born, that's, it. that's the way it is. So that's why God says, pray that you will find your purpose. Amen. Turn to someone and say, 2019, come on, come on. If you have a problem, I'm going to pray for you. In Jesus' name, be here. Turn to someone. In 2019, you will be full, you will be full of purpose. You will know your purpose. You will walk with purpose. You will you will run with purpose. Amen. Okay. Number three. We are running because this is not what I want to dwell in. We can take some time in the later part of the year. Talk about each section. The third one. Give us this day, my daily bread. That talks about provision. You know, you are. It's your right to ask your daddy. Don't go and say if it is your will. Give me this. This is right. This is right. You know, my son, he doesn't come kneel down and say, Oh, father, the preacher, Papa's house pastor, all the, the names designated, you know, traveling to the nations, I bow before you. I need 10 rupees for ice cream. Not my will, your will be done. It's like this young boy who prayed. He went to his mom and he said, Mama, I need bicycle. Mama said, No, 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 you gotta pray. And he went to turn on the TV and the pastor said, I claim. So he thought he should claim. So he was claiming for a whole week. Nothing happened. A week later he went to Mama and said, Mama, I need bicycle again. Mama said, no, go and pray. So he said, that something is wrong with claiming. So I should do something else. He turned the television again. He said, one pastor said, not my will, you will be done. So in one week he was praying, not my will, you will be done. Not my will, you will be done. He got so frustrated. The third week he went to his mom and Mama, I need my bike. Mama said, keep praying. So he found out his own way on the kitchen stack, on the kitchen counter, he saw a statue of Mary. <laughs> he took that statue, went inside, closed the door, closed the curtains, everything, put the statue under the bed and he said, Jesus, if you want to see your mother again. <laughs> and sometimes we do that, right? When we try to bend, you know, sometimes we manipulate it. We say, God, you know, the kingdom people, write it down, kingdom people never bargain, never beg, never bribe. Kingdom people believe in the word of God. Amen. 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 Kingdom people never bargain. If you do this, I'll do this. You know? This is what kingdom people never do this. If you and then they bribe. What is bribe? Lord, if you do this, my first month salary is for you. As if he is waiting without your salary. <laughs> they don't bribe, they don't bargain, and they don't what? They don't beg. Hello? Kingdom people only believe. Say this after me. I am a kingdom person. I'm a kingdom, I'm a kingdom citizen. I'm a kingdom citizen. So no more begging. No more begging. No more bargaining. No more bargaining. Only believing. Only believing. Amen. 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 You believe. That's why you gotta dig into the word. Put the word inside. Let the word create in you. Amen? Amen. Okay. The fourth one. This is the interesting part. Forgive our sins as we forgive others. You see, there is a click inside. There is a, there is a kind of a, a, a condition there. And that's called pardon. Once the way you will be forgiven is the way you will be the, the way you will be forgiven is the way you release forgiveness to others. Amen. Isn't it beautiful? And that's where we want to dwell the rest of the uh, sermon, next 15 minutes. And the last one, don't let the to yield us into temptation and rescue us from evil one. It talks about protection. So it's all P, 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 P. So it's easy to remember. Praise, purpose, provision, pardon, and protection. So we're going to take one segment of the prayer called pardon. And we're going to talk about it. Are you okay? Okay. Alright. So, I want to give you some tools. What happens when you don't forgive? Because people say, you know brother, Jesus is coming soon. I have, I don't need to. You know, it's like, you know, toughness has become heroism right now. You know, the more bitter you are, you are more stronger you are. Actually, it's the more covered you are in the kingdom. Amen. 
Sometimes people say, real men don't cry. Have you heard that thing? I, I have a good news for them. They are not real men. <laughs> Hello? People say, you are a real man, you are a man, man. You know, they, 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 especially in the Tamil culture, they say, you want to cry. Me, sir. Andhra Dati. How can you cry? You know? But Jesus looked at the city of Jerusalem and he said, the one short verse I memorized when I was 18 years old. Jesus wept. Every day I have to get up in the morning and memorize one verse. So this was my memory verse. Jesus wept. And then I wept because my daddy wept me. <laughs> anyway, so I'll give you some practical tools. This is going to be interesting. Write it down. Why I should, what happens if I don't forgive? It prevents God to forgive me. Matthew 6.14 If you forgive those who sin against you, your father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive, your father will not forgive. I tell you guys, many times we come to a place, we think it has to go with my feeling. Can I tell you, feeling is nothing to do with choices. Okay? We have trained that way, but let me tell you, God says, I am faithful. When was the last time you was felt faithful to be faithful? He was faithful. Imagine you didn't feel faithful. You and me would not be here today. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be here. See, sometimes we put so much emphasis on the feelings, but it is actually God is calling us not to be guided by the feelings, but to guide the feelings. Amen? Amen. See, that's why when a young girl or a boy, when they are in their teens, when they say, Oh, this is the one. And the parents will say, No, this is not the one. Hello? When my pastor uncle uh, married me and my wife and he said the two shall become one for the first two years we were fighting about which one <laughs> it took us two years to find out then I realized it was my wife <laughs> okay. married men know what I'm talking about <clears throat> so it prevents God to forgive you that means our forgiveness is directly related what does that mean God never had a feeling to let go of offenses that we did towards him. Okay? But if I choose to align how I feel, I wouldn't be sharing what I'm sharing to you right now. Why? Because I would be entitled for justice. My mentor, who is no more, one of my mentors used to say this, what you and me deserve in this world is death. It's God's grace giving you life. Many times we say, I don't deserve this. You know what actually we deserve? Sorry, 2019. And happy New Year, by the way. <laughs> You're like, what the heck, man? It's the first message of 2019. Happy New Year. What we deserve in this... Happy New Year. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Number two. You can't enjoy the presence of God. That's what it means if you don't forgive. Why? Matthew 5... 24 says, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled with the person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. What does that mean? It basically means that the presence of God is not just having a good time in the church. Hello? Church time, let me put it like this. God says you are the salt. He uses metaphors. You are the salt. And then he says you are the light. And you are like a yeast. He uses metaphors. What salt does? Salt enhances flavor. Right? What light does enables people to see clearly. So imagine when you hang out with people, you bring flavor in the conversation. Amen. Yes or no? Yes. What is the light? That means when people are confused, when you are there, they can think clearly. Imagine that. When you are yeast, what is the yeast? I, I, we have no time to talk about yeast, but yeast will never change its property. It changes the property that is around the surrounding by. That means, whenever the yeast goes into the Tao, the Tao takes over the property of the yeast. Amen? 
That's what God says. When you are east, so Sunday is like you guys are all east. Okay? Now we are getting more east. Now we get out of the church. We are becoming that we are spreading the east. So we expect my office, my place of influence is going to change because I am carrying the east, the kingdom of God. Amen? So that's what it means. When you cannot let go, what happens is you become the east is shut off. That's what the God says. What good it is if salt lost its saltiness. I don't want 2019 that you will be no salt. That you will be dark. That you will be less east. I prophesy only 2019 that you will be full of light. Full of salt. You will add a flavor. That you will go wherever it's going to create change. Why? Because you have chosen to forgive. Only through that we can worship God. And worshiping God is not just, you know, sometimes worship leaders they say, you know, are you church entering, are you church and excited to enter the presence of God? But where were you before? Were you in the devil's presence? Presence of God is not the happy full songs in the morning. Presence of God is the joy and the peace and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit every single moment of my life. Amen. Amen. That's called the presence of God. That's why I can't lose. The first thing the enemy steals is your joy, is your peace. And when he steals that, you have no power over your life. Many Christians are powerless Christians. Why? Because there is no peace in them. They are resentment. They cannot say hi to another fellow believer because the issues have been there. 2019, you would be bridge builders in the city of Elm. Amen? Amen? I'm praying one day. This is one of my dreams. I have a lot of dreams. Okay, I'll tell you one dream. One day, I believe, once a year at least, all the churches in the room will come and have a corporate Sunday worship. Amen. Amen. How beautiful it will be. And nobody needs to promote any ministry or nothing. Come together, no seats in the front, nothing. Everybody standing down, worshipping the Lord. You can bring one man of God, a woman of God, to give a best message. Imagine all churches, CSI, Anglican, Baptist, Pentecostal, Ultra Pentecostal, you know, all of them bring together. You know, I was part of the Ultra. You know, <clears throat> And you bring them all together and you worship the King of Glory. That's what the prayer of John 17, man. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, by this, what is that this? The unity. People will know that they are my disciples. Amen. So we are divided. Let's pray for that. I don't know when this is going to happen. We are praying for 2020. Love the Lord 2020. We want to do that. We want to gather the churches together. You know, I don't want, I don't want to do like, oh, this is an initiative of Papa's house. It's not about promoting Papa's house. It's to promote Papa's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Imagine all churches together, come together and we pray. People say, oh, you are CSI, but you are Bendigas. You know, Tamil people cannot say Bendigas. They say, Bendigas, how come you are together? I say, we have the same king. Amen. You have the same king. Imagine that guy's dream. Dream about this. Imagine if everybody gathers together. You see, in the green, you know, there's a green uh, in the front of the fort or take a rent an auditorium or take, take a theater. Now we have good theaters. Imagine one day on one year, on Sunday, all of us gather, mass gathering. Worship the Lord. Just worship. Not introducing Reverend Dr. Right, Reverend Left, Reverend, you know, back Reverend, friend Reverend. Not anything of those. Not pastor, bishop, nothing. Apostle, chef, sat, nothing. Just King of Glory being exalted. Woo! I'm preaching, but say amen. 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 I get excited about this. Okay, number three. Why we should forgive and what happens when we don't forgive? You block the plan of God in your life. That happens. Why? Because devil has a plan. What is devil's plan? To steal, kill and destroy. By the way, Happy New Year. You all look like. You okay? Okay. So, he blocks the plan of God in your life. Jeremiah 29, 11. It talks about plans, but actually the Hebrew translation, it says thoughts of God. Imagine God thinks about you. Come on. What was your first thought when you got up in the morning? How many people liked my post on Instagram? I don't know about you, but sometimes I have thought about it. Okay? How many people? Did I cross the 200 mark? 300 mark? What, what, what extra 
a gift I should do. We never take the plates that we finished eating and put it on Facebook. We do that? The plate that has got everything, that, that, that uh, drumstick that has been chewed like, like a cow and thrown on the plate and the curry leaves. We don't take that, but we take that thali that was presented neatly and the papadam not cracked. We take a picture, filter it, hashtag happy times. You look like you never do those kind of nonsense. <laughs> right? But, but listen, I, I, let me tell you guys, but there are times God thinks all the time. There are times we don't think about God, but God thinks about us. Even when we are in the bad, worst times, God is thinking about us. And what happens when we keep this, harboring this resentment, unforgiveness, what happens? We are blocking the plan of God. You're blocking the plan of God. It's like taking a pistol and I'm shooting my own feet and I'm saying, I'm limping Lord, I'm limping Lord. It's actually me who has shot my own feet. 2019, let go of that. Amen. Amen. I heard one man of God said, Take all the files that you collected, the facts that you have collected, the proof that you have that this person did all, take it all, throw it in the fire. Let God just be your justifier. Amen? That's what I did in 2018. We took all the facts, files, we put it in the fire and we said, God, you want to look higher than joy. Amen? Because what's happened in 2018 is not going to determine in 2019. Because that's my past, this is my future. God says, I am with you on this. Amen. Amen. Come on. Number four. What are the benefits sir, of forgiveness? Ah, I think I think I give you three principles. You know? Now I'll give you what are the benefits of forgiveness. Now let's let's look at the next slide. Is that the same one I have here? Yeah, wonderful. Listen, this is beautiful. Forgiveness is giving the person another chance. In other words, a full pardon. I say in my car, seven eighteen says, what who is God like you, pardoning the equity and passing over transgressions for the remnant of our inheritance? And he does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. There are two big phrases transgressions, iniquities. Okay? These are very uh, theological words we need to understand. People in Isaiah also talks about he has forgiven, he was bruised for our iniquities and punished for our. Transgressions. Okay. Iniquity is internal motivation. Okay. I look at a girl and I am thinking lustfully. It's called iniquity. What is a transgression? I looked at a girl and I floated with her and I made a move. As a married man, I should never do that. Hello? That's called transgression. So, iniquity is internal motivation. Transgression is external action. Are we, are, we, are we on the same page? So, many times in the church, we are very careful not to make sure we don't transgress. Am I right? Make sure that we give the appearance of good. Oh yeah, brother, praise the Lord, sister. Yes, the Lord is good. You know, we use that amazing words. Yeah, He is nullaver, but are you nullaver? <laughs> you understand, we kind of portray, but nobody knows your iniquity. I can keep looking at you and say, praise the Lord, but inside I will be cursed. <laughs> That's why the Bible says in Proverbs, I can't find the address, when you sit with this guy, unrighteous person, what is unrighteous? The one does not have the peace with God. That's why you're unrighteous. An unrighteous person, when you sit with them to eat, he will say, eat, eat, eat. But don't eat, put your life on your throat. Why? His heart is not with you. What is that heart? His heart means the peace is not with you. Does it make sense? Are you bored? Happy New Year. Amen. It makes sense what I'm trying to say? So that, that's why it's so important that we let go of this. That's why these two things, transgressions, iniquities. Transgressions, outward motivation. It's outward action, rather. Iniquity, internal Sometimes we can have a good word outside and inside within us. That's why God looks and says, I'm not like a man who looks outside, I'm looking inside what's happening. Right. Okay. 2019, we'll bring those iniquities before our altar. We'll burn all the facts. 
Amen? Amen. Alright. Number two, benefit. I'm running fast because I want to pray impartation over you. Okay. Have forgiveness helped me to start fresh. That means it's a new beginning. Amen. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, if anyone who is in Christ, again, Sarkika's word, if you are using paper version, you know, for the word in Christ. He is a new creation. All the things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In other words, that I am letting go so that I can start fresh. Amen. So many times people don't want to let go. What happened, brother? Who's going to bring justice? I want to do this. Tit for tat. The Bible doesn't teach you tit for tat. The Bible teaches you if they did it, release them. Amen. I'll give you examples of my personal journey, and uh, but we have lack of time, so I'm running fast. The third principle of benefits of forgiveness: forgiveness lifts up all the heavy burden. You know, in UK, I read this article. In UK, they did a test in the hospital, and they made uh, the patients the same ward. They dedicated one one row of patients just medicine. The other row of patients, they allowed pastors to come in and to talk to them and to ask about if there was any bitterness in them. And they can forgive and let go. And after a month, they made a survey and they came. This is from one of the, I think it was New York Times or somewhere. And they said, and they, and, and they come up with a big, amazing statement. They say, the people who are forgiven, let go, got healed, faster, double the time faster than they were just given medicine. Wow. And then the author, finally the narrator, he says, I guess prayer works. That was a catchphrase I could remember. I guess prayer works. Come on. It has to be proved scientifically to believe this. No need. It's in the Bible. Let go. Start fresh. Take out the heavy burden. That's why the Bible says, Come, all who are carrying heavy burden. Matthew 11, 18, 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me. And I am gentle. Let me tell you, we are recording, but I want to tell you this. I'm not scared. But the last word of a particular dominant religion in Middle East, the guru of the religion said, Anybody who don't believe in what we believe, kill them all. That was the last word from the guru of the particular religion in the Middle East. What was the last word of our master? Father, we have no wow. clue what they are doing. Forgive them. You see the difference? That's why one wants to keep on fighting, another wants to look for peace. Look at this, the foundation, guys. The one wants to say, if you don't believe what we believe, annihilate them. But here, our master hanging on the cross, bleeding to death, he says, Papa, forgive us. They have no clue what they hate their way. This is my contemporary Charles version. Amen. Number four, the benefits of forgiveness. Forgiveness cancels the debts we owe. Colossians 2.14 says, Having been cancelled out, the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, he has given us, taken us out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. You see, Paul was writing to a pagan church. He was writing to a uh, Gentile group, where it is common for men to give a certificate. That's the like triple talak. Just give a certificate. And he is using that word, he is saying, having cancelled that certificate, he was saying, hey, just like your husbands cancel you, God has cancelled your forgiveness, and he in fact, take that certificate, and he, what he did? He nailed it on the cross. Wow. We, we read that and be like, what the heck certificate? We don't have a, we, don't, we remember 10 certificate, 12 certificate, policy certificate. You know, but we have no clue about what, what the hate certificate is. But this is what it means. I have cancelled the certificate of debt consisting of degrees against us, which was hostile to us. What is hostile? Because sin cannot please God. 
That's why we are hostile. And he has taken us out of the way, having made it on the cross. 2019, God has made it on the cross. You need to let go. Amen? You need to let it go. I mean, number five, the benefits of forgiveness. Forgiveness breaks the chain of bitterness. That's why it's good to talk to people. Find somebody. I wrote down, I heard from the other person, man of God, one man of God said, revealing your feeling is the beginning of your healing. Okay? Revealing your feeling is the beginning of your healing. Don't harbor it down. You just say, Lord, I want to break and this chain of forgiveness. And you know what is the number one job of the Holy Spirit? Is to break the chain of bitterness. The moment we broke the chain, you know what the first word comes out from our mouth? Abba, Father. Amen. That's why the Spirit, Romans 8 says, the Spirit enables us to call Abba, Father. Amen. Today you want to be called. No religion calls their followers, demands their followers to call their God, their deity, Abba, Father. But here he is. God is saying, you can call me Daddy God. Amen. I'm your daddy. Why? I cancelled it. I took that certificate and I nailed it on the cross. Now you can call me Daddy God. Amen. And I wrote down this. If you're going to do business with God, the currency going to you and lose is forgiveness. Amen. That's the way God did business with us. If he took our sins, made a list, and he wants to punish us based on that, I wouldn't be here alive. But God took a way to deal with us. He said, you cannot pay it. I'm going to pay it with my son. Just do what my son did for you. Release the tears. Amen. How would it be if 2019, a small group of handful of people start believing what God has promised like this? Amen. Living a life free, tough on broken, bitter free, let go, reveal your feeling. Start beginning feeling your healing and it's going to become so beautiful. There is a principle called hurt people hurt. But there is another principle. You know, there's a beautiful principle. It's called heal the people, heal people. Amen. We know about hurt people hurt. I'm hurted, brother. That's why I'm hurting. But I also want to prophecy over you 2019. Happy New Year, by the way. Heal the people and heal people. You are a healed people. Let's put your hand on your heart and say, 2019, though I go through hurt, I am healed. Wherever I go, to whom I talk, I am bringing healing. Because Christ has healed me. And last but not the least, why we forgive? God forgives us. God forgives us. That's it. So simple. You and me are sitting here freely worshipping the Lord. Not because your grandmother prayed. Not because my, you know, of course those prayers are all, I'm not discounting it. But the bottom line comes down to the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's it. That's why you and me are free. God has forgiven. Why we forgive? If you don't release them, we end up in them. So many people say, I will never be like this person. The girls, they will say, I will never marry a person like my dad. Guess what they do? End up marrying just like that. Why? Because they are harboring bitterness in their hearts. But if you release them, you will not resemble them. Amen? But if you don't release them, you will end up resembling them. There are three plagues. I will finish up. I need 12, 12, 30. There are three plagues that plagues the mankind. The first one is called the sexual abuse, sexual immorality. The second one is the drug abuse and alcohol abuse. But the third plague that breaks our, the whole of mankind is bitterness. The first two somehow we eradicated in the church or at least trying to cover it up. But we are open to have bitter people serving in the ministry, doing challenge, doing office, works. But I want to prophesy over you, you'll be free.